Division 5 is the only division this weekend to feature two undefeated teams. Over the next 48 minutes, we'll find out if the ground-and-pound attack of Liberty Center can nullify the explosive, razzle-dazzle style of Perry. It's the Tigers and the Pirates in the Division 5 state championship next on Spectrum News 1. Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton this afternoon. Two unbeatens, the Liberty Center Tigers and the Perry Pirates square off for the Division 5 State Championship on the OHSAA Game of the Week presented by Baldwin Wallace University. A delightful day in Canton as we welcome you to the Division 5 State Championship. Tim Bray and the Hall of Fame coach Vince Siriano. These two teams, boy, neither one of them have been here for a while. Perry never been here, and Liberty Center, it's been 26 years. How's it going to unfold today? Well, today we have a classic matchup between two teams that can really run the football, and they play great defense. But they are a little different in that Perry's had great success with the shotgun spread, and Liberty Center runs the wing tee offense and scores a lot of points. All right, let's take a look at how they got here, and Perry sailed off to a big league and took out Harvest Prep in the semis. And then the Tigers use their defense to get by Valley View last week. And Liberty Center has been climbing the ladder year after year. They're in the finals now. And Coach, how are they approaching today? Well, Liberty Center has a multi-formational wing tee offense that features the fullback runs and halfback power game. They're a run-dominant team, but they'll mix in the play-action pass. They're averaging 44 points a game, and defensively, they use a 3-3 stack with five DBs. Their strength is their front six, with their strong safeties and outside linebackers making all the adjustments. Now the Pirates have been rolling all year. It's a big play team coach with a stingy defense. You know, Perry has an explosive big play offense that uses the shotgun spread and eye formation. They like to establish the run first, but they will throw the ball to their very talented receivers to create chunk plays and long TVs. On defense, they will play a very aggressive odd front with the outside linebackers up on the line of scrimmage, and they have a very talented secondary on the back end. All right, time to check our stars to watch. Brought to you by Akron Children's and one of the triplets for Liberty Center, and that is Trenton Cruz, and the quarterback for Perry, and that is Walter Moses. Well, when you look, Trenton Cruz is a two-way player. He's the player the wing tee offense starts with. He's a good combination of size and speed along with being a hard physical runner. He has 22 TDs and is the leading tackler on the team from his linebacker position. When you look at Perry, quarterback Walter Moses, he is a big time quarterback who can make all the throws. He has a very strong arm and is extremely accurate. He is also the district player of the year and a 71% passer. All right, one of these two teams will complete an undefeated season. One will earn the right to be state champion. One versus two, coming up right after the break. The OHSAA Football State Championships are presented in part by the Spectrum News app, your community connection for news, weather, and live games. Download from mobile, Apple TV, and Roku today. By Baldwin Wallace University, a confident choice for exceptional learning. Learn more at bw.edu. And by Spectrum Mobile. Get unlimited data for $29.99 per line. Join the millions that have already switched and you could save big each month. Terrific hospitality here in Canton as the Division 5 state championship is about to unfold all season long. The Tigers and the Pirates have been at the top of the Division 5 polls, so it's only fitting they would come here to Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium and play for the title. Well, as we are getting set for this football game, here come the Liberty Center Tigers, 15-0. And, and right behind them, it's the Perry Pirates. They had eight inches of snow on their field on Tuesday, but they somehow got through it, and they are ready to go. 
Katie Pollock has joined our crew for today's game, and she's on the sidelines. Katie? Thank you so much, Tim. All right, guys, I had a chance to talk to both the head coaches while they were warming up before the game. We're going to start with Liberty Center and Casey Moeller. He said the community support for Liberty Center has just been off the charts. In fact, they have one school that goes kindergarten through 12th grade in Liberty Center. So they had a huge parade, a big send-off. A lot of people came to cheer them on today, and um, he said that the little kids, the kindergartners or first graders, look at these boys like they are playing in the Super Bowl today. And then as far as Perry goes, they have a huge crowd today here, too. And uh, Perry Hedge coach Bob Guestwich said, uh, quote, they worked out, they ate, they got in a game day lift, and now we're here. It is all business for Perry. Guys, back to you. All right, sounds good. As both of these teams are ready to kick this one off, and it is Liberty Center winning the toss. They have elected to defer, and the Perry Pirates will take the football first. Today's first half kickoff is brought to you by K. Havnanian Holmes. And there is Perry with Braylon Edwards to bring this football back. He is back in dual receiving mood, and he will be back there with Jaden Studio as the two will stand about the five yard line, and they will get set to receive this kick from Ian Rosebrook, Liberty Center's kicker. Hope you enjoy it. It is the only championship game with two undefeated teams and here we go end over end all the way into the end zone and that is where the Pirates will put it in play first and ten so Walter Moses will be the starting quarterback and he is district player of the year for the Perry Pirates here are his numbers 2,021 total passing yards this year, 24 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. He completes 71.1% of his throws. He is a three-year starter. He got snaps as a freshman. So it's first and 10 from the 20-yard line as we get set for football here in Canton, Division 5. We have Perry right now in their four wide receiver set, which is very common. And they will pitch it. And the first play goes to Owen McCoon. And he is gained a couple of yards, and that is it. Today's starting lineup is brought to you by Akron Children's. Here's your offensive line with a sophomore center and one senior. This is a young Perry team. They're the backs and receivers as Jaden Studio is the top running back. But you got to believe that. Owen McCoon is going to play a key role in today's game. Second down and eight. It's a great two way player. One of the leaders of the team. And he will see the ball get loose and it is loose at the 13 yard line and it will be third down because covering that football was McCoon. They never got the handoff. Walter Moses play action pass and they got pressure right off the edge and right up the middle. Yeah, that was nose and defensive end. Two defensive linemen in that 3-3 stack. LC almost got that football. They were very close to recovering. All right, so they're behind the chains here. Usually they throw underneath in this situation to try to get the yardage back. Two by two. Moses. Going to throw it deep. He's got a man, and it's caught. Oh, my. And that's Ashburn all the way down to the 35-yard line. First down, a chunk play for the Pirates. That's their M.O. The quarterback, Moses, scrambled around, keeps his eyes downfield. Look at his eyes. Ashburn breaks loose, coming across the field on a deep cross route. Big play by Jimmy Ashburn. The five foot five, 139 pound sophomore. Now they go to the I formation. They'll change in and out from a spread to the old I formation. They run classic I formation plays. 50 yards on the completed pass. 
Power off tackle. McCoon to the 35, maybe to the 34. And let's set the defense as it's brought to you by Akron Children's. It's a 3-4. Zyder in the middle. Landon Brockelman, he was the player of the year in the conference and the district. Linebackers. Ah, yes, the triplets. All three of them. Garrison is only a freshman. They have another senior there, and that is Landon Cruz, and he's the free safety. Cruz up the middle. Yeah, they've got that middle taken care of. The three linebackers and the safety behind them. They're in that 3-3 stack, playing with five DBs back there. Jet sweep. Good cut. Still on his feet. Great play by Richards. He made that happen. His elusiveness and speed on the jet sweep. You know, when he's in space, he's electrifying. He's got 10-800 speed, and he put his foot in the ground that time. Now, you can see how they attacked. They had five DBs across, three safeties and two corners, and they were playing a loose coverage there, and they attacked that edge and attacked the outside linebackers right now. So get Richards will come out to the near sideline and he's in the slot. They're gonna hand off. And breaking free is McCoon, and he gets down inside the 15 to about the 13, we'll give him seven. McCoon is a very strong runner. He's physical, that's the counter play. With one lineman kicking out, the other lineman turning up on a linebacker. Moeller made the tackle, Trenton Cruz went for a ride. They'll say the 14 and not the 15 or 13, so it'll be a plus six. Eight minutes to go. We played four here in the first quarter. If we notice, Perry has set that up with a big play. Now they're staying ahead of the chains. It's an H back set. Just got it off. Quarterback giving it to Richards. They'll go to that. With Richards playing some wildcat to use his speed and versatility. They, yeah. that this is just a sweep, pulling the backside lineman. Richards was the quarterback a couple of years ago, Moses' freshman year. And Richards then moved to the wide receiver position. Third down. It's third and two. Big play here, condensed set on the left side. Scrimmage from the 12. He's gonna throw it. Now he's gonna run, and he didn't get there. It's gonna be marked at the 12. Really good pursuit, and it was those linebackers made a big play inside for LC, and also leading the way was Xander Zyder. We're going with a sprint out pass here to get away from the pressure. They were trying to run a receiver in the flat and a receiver on a corner route in the end zone over top. And Landon Bockelman made the initial heat hit. He's lineman of the year. He in is the really good. Yeah, he so it no field goal here. Bob Gaswich wants touchdowns and now a timeout. He wants to talk this over. So 623 to go in the first. Perry driving. Division five state championship will continue in a moment. No score, but Perry driving. And today's keys to the game are brought to you by Northern Ohio Honda dealers. What do you think, coach? Well, when we start off with Liberty Center, they want to eliminate negative plays. They want to get three yards on every play and stay on schedule in that wing T offense. And they also defensively, they want to prevent big plays and don't give up those big plays because Perry really makes a lot of yardage on chunk plays. Now Perry offensively, they got to take care of the football. They don't want any turnovers and give them the ball. And then defensively, they got to win third down and get off the field and get the ball back. There's Casey Moeller, Bowling Green grad. Actually, both coaches are Bowling Green grads. Here's the fourth down play early in this ball game. Moses going to throw, try and, and the ball knocked down. They were just trying to hit a flat pass. Great job. To Braden Richards. 
but the defense was all over that. Colton Cruz, the senior, knocked that one away. And notice he was up on the line of scrimmage and getting that edge pressure. Here he comes right off. They've taken an outside linebacker in the 3-3 stack and put him up on the line of scrimmage to stop him on fourth down. So here comes Liberty Center, 15-0. They won the Northwest Ohio Athletic League, 44 points per game, led by Landon Amstutz. You'll see a very different kind of football game here offensively. This is the wing tee, and they will hand to Colton Cruz, who gets very, very little, if nothing. Armani Ciappone, the safety, comes up to make the tackle, and here are Stutz's, Amstutz's numbers. He doesn't throw much. He runs some, 981 yards and 105 attempts in 15 games, nine touchdowns. He's about a 60% passer, which is really good for a wing tee quarterback. Second down play. Man in motion, they'll go up front and go up top, and they got about three, and there is Trenton Cruz as we take a look at the offense, the offensive line for the Tigers, and led by three juniors and two seniors, and Landon Bachelman will play on this side of the ball as well. 6'4", 265, an outside tackle. And then you've got the backs and receivers and the two cruises in the backfield, along with Colton Chambers, who is the wing back. Double tight end set with a sprint out pass. Amstutz the throw, fires it, and he cannot connect. It's incomplete near sideline. He tried to hit it to Colton, uh, to Colton Cruz, and it was broken up by Vince Tomasek. He made a nice play. Because Colton Cruz really made a nice little out cut there, right at the sticks. But Tomsak, Tomasek really did a good job of staying on it and making the play. That was a unique set by Liberty Central there. They had two tight ends and two receivers. So here is the punt, and it's almost blocked. Walter Max, Max Walter barely got that one out. And good field position by Perry. They didn't score on the first series, but they got the ball at the 42-yard line. Good field position for Perry. Let's see if they can do something with it. They've been traditionally going here with four wide receivers. And notice that both teams are huddling. Today's weather is brought to you by Green and Sons Farm and Lawn Equipment. 53 degrees. That's balmy here in Canton. And uh, hardly any wind. And a cloudy condition. So from the line of scrimmage at the 42, under five to play. First quarter, no score. Richardson motion. Play action off the jet. Moses going to throw it deep, and he's got his man. And it is a touchdown. Oh, what a great Luke throw. Luke Savon so, right on a skinny post. Luke Savon from 42. They didn't waste any time. Sent him deep. And the all-district performer takes it home. You know, they like the field position. They look. They said, we're right on the 40-yard line. Let's take a shot. We're very close to four-down territory. Otanan Aiton Lopez to kick it through, and he's got it, and Perry strikes first. When you fake that jet sweep, that freezes those defenders because they may have to come up and pursue on the jet sweep. And that gives somebody with a lot of speed, like Savon, a chance to get behind them, which he does. And the ball was perfectly placed. That's a quarterback that's the district player of the year. He has a big time arm with great accuracy. Coach, and a lot of people might not know this about Vince Seriano, but he coaches quarterbacks. And you told me before the game, watch his throwing motion. It's flawless. He is a big time quarterback. He may have two offers now, but believe me, I've recruited quarterbacks. He is going to have a lot more offers. One play, my goodness. And the scoring play confirmed and a 7-0 lead for the Pirates. All right, if you are Liberty Center, you have to just take a, a big breath, don't you? And yeah, just... let's come back and let's get into that wing T offense. 
They came out with a couple different formations that I had not seen in video study of them. I'm sure they were saving it for a game like this. I think, you know, they're in that wing T offense. They're going to go back to their base plays. Lopez kicks it on the ground to an up man at the 20 yard line and they'll bring it back to about the 30 and that's where it'll be first and 10 for Liberty Center down a touchdown. So Perry comes in and plays a lot of three four defense as well. Trent Taylor the sophomore with two juniors on the defensive line. Studio McCoon two of the three linebackers and a couple of good ones right there. And there are your secondary for Perry. They're in there three four with their outside linebackers up on the line of scrimmage and went two tight end offense for Liberty Center. Not much for Colton Cruz. Both teams are dabbling with the I formation. They'll get in it enough that you have to defend it and they'll run some type of power game. That was an isolation play right at the linebacker there. A gain of call it two and they'll move it out to the 34 yard line Jaden studio but those committed two, to uh, Kent State. Those He's, two inside linebackers for Perry are really stellar performers really strong. Going to throw it over the top and it's knocked away at the last minute. Wow that's two for Tomasek and Incomplete is the pass and it'll be third down and what an effort right there to knock that ball away. You talk about a lockdown corner. He can really do it and that gets was, his eyes up takes it with the proper hand that was outstanding. Landon Cruz the intended receiver and it'll be third down. We're in a double tight end set again with two, two flankers two of these very Defenders have five interceptions. Going to throw it short and oh, incomplete. This time it went to Landon Cruz again, and what an effort by Luke Savon. And he is the young man that caught the touchdown pass a moment ago. Oh, you good. know, we haven't had a chance to talk about this, but most of these players are going both ways. Right. They're starters on offense and defense in the, in the Division Five program just based on the number of students and athletes that you have on the team. So Walker will kick it away and it is caught at the 32 yard line and brought back to about the 44 and that'll be a 14 yard return. Gives you an opportunity to see how versatile these athletes are when they're playing on both sides of the football. And Luke Savon brought it back. So he has been an integral part of this first quarter. You know, as I was saying earlier, you see both teams huddling. That's because when players are playing both ways, as a coach, you've got to slow down the game a little bit. Let your players rest and catch their breath. So that's why you see both teams huddling, because their players are getting so many snaps in the course of this game. So the Pirates come out. Pony is out to the top of your screen by himself and Moses will hand off this time to McCoon cuts it back and he gets to midfield and into LC territory and that is Trenton Cruz that brought him down covered him but not before a gain of seven. You know Perry is using two pullers and one is kicking out the other one is leading up on the linebacker. And the back is reading the play of where they have created the crease. They do a very good job. That is their best play. So McCune going all the way at running back here in the first quarter. Studio playing defense only. And it'll be McCune again. Cuts it back. Same play. First down and more. And we get a flag from the center judge. They're running a counter, which you call the guard tackle counter. Hannah Keller is the Holding center judge. Offense number 58. She Ten called that penalty. and a very distinguished moment for her because she is the first woman to be an official in the championship game. Look. Yeah, the, 
just, you know, they were trying to get penetration and his natural reaction, don't let him get penetration. All right, we have four wide receivers in the shotgun. Back at the 40 yard line. They're showing mug, what you call mugging linebackers out of the 3 3 stack. Adjustments by LC. They will throw near sideline, and it is incomplete. Moses trying to hit the slot guy, and that was Ashburn who caught a huge pass of 50 yards, a big chunk play on the first series. Liberty so, Center went to five DBs across the board. See, sometimes those they have two strong safeties, one on each side. They have three safeties and two corners, and sometimes the safeties will come up and play the flat on each side, where sometimes they'll come back and align on the hash, and they have a deep third backing up their corner who is playing a little more aggressive. Here you can see the corners. The corners are going to be playing really tight now. And too much time. Delay a game. Play Get clock ball. is down to zero. Delay a game. Offense, number 11, five-yard penalty. So now it's third, third and 18. Moving the ball back to the 35-yard line. Both head coaches are the play callers. Bob Geswich for Perry and Casey Muller, who said to me earlier today, I don't know anything but the wing tee. I played it in high school, and so that's why we're playing it now. Moses Four man rush. Running around. He's going to throw on the run, and it is going to be caught. At the 32 first down, they're going to mark it at the 30. You talk about high pointing a ball and making a great catch again. That was based on the mobility of Moses and again placing the ball only where it can be placed. Trefisker makes the tackle or the catch. Nate Trefisker, only a freshman. Oh, that's Richards. I'm sorry, Richards. Richards made the catch. Saw 12 and 13 over there at the same time. Counter so again. Here's McCoon and balls out. Bachelman's got it. Flag. Oh, that's a beanbag. Sorry. Beanbag looked like a yellow and it was actually a red one. And Bachelman has got the football and he has a knack at taking it away. Remember the keys of the game from the very beginning. Take care of the football and the ball gets knocked loose, got away from his body right at the hit. They were running the counter again and trying to create that seam inside. Well, that really nullifies a 35-yard catch by, on third down by Richards, and now here's a pitch and the best play of the day for LC. This is one of their favorite plays, is to turn around, pitch the ball to the fullback, Trenton Cruz, and let his brother Colton lead around the end. That's one of their top plays. Gain of about five. Now we're seeing Perry, they're almost playing what we also always called the old 52 defense. There are five defensive people up on the ball with two linebackers. That was snapped directly to Colton Cruz, and the direct snap takes it to about the 37. And right there was Trent Taylor. Yeah, a little misdirection there, where they fake one direction and the quarterback keeps it. We have a tendency to call that a dual run read. You can hand off, pull it, but I think that was predetermined ahead of time. Isn't that kind of like the evolution of the wing tee a little bit? Yes, it is. And Amstutz is back in there at quarterback. There's that toss to the fullback. And nothing going on and barely got back to the line of scrimmage. What a great effort by Jaden Studio to stay home. Fourth and, down. And then we had great pursuit by Drew Smith on the inside out, which he does as a nose guard position. He is really quick. Some people call it a nose tackle in the old days in a 50 defense. We used to call it a nose guard. So, but he's the guy over the center. Savon back deep and Walker to kick it again. 50 for Liberty Center. They couldn't get anything and capitalize on that fumble recovery. The ball goes out of bounds, but actually pretty good hang time. Max Walker 
Hits it down to about the 30-yard line. The final OHSAA football state final is ahead on Spectrum News 1 and Spectrum News app. Alter will play Glenville in the Division 4 championship. It's going to be at 7.30 tonight. Coverage begins at 7.15 with OHSAA championship game day. Back to that four wide receiver set. Winding down to the last 40 seconds. Liberty oh. center going to the four man front, now changing to a three man front. Bo's going to run it up the middle. He's got enough for a first down, I think, yeah, all the way to the 40. Very close quarterback draw with McCoon leading the way. Ah, one back quarterback power. They pulled the backside guard right up on the play. Joey Baldry pulled up. That's called a one back power. They had an extra blocker with the quarterback running. A lot of people do that out of empty. What a first quarter. And let the quarterback, but they had an extra blocker with McCoon leading. So you had the backside guard pulling around along with the, the lead back. So Perry gets into the end zone, and that was it in the first quarter. 7-0 Pirates in the Division 5 championship game. Hi, everybody. Welcome to back to the Division 5 state championship game. Liberty Center versus Perry right now. Perry with a 7-0 lead going into the second quarter. Uh, Tim, you mentioned Hannah Keller, and she is the first female official in OHSAA football title game history. Today, I talked to her before the game. She said this is her 10th year in high school football. As we said, first time refing the uh, championship game. She started when she was 18, and she got into it because of her father. She also refs basketball. Guys? That is impressive, and congratulations to Hannah. The OHSAA Game of the Week presented by Baldwin Wallace University on Spectrum News 1. Moses took that just over center, first down, and they moved the chains to the 42-yard line. You know, they're, they're pretty even in their, their plays and so forth. It's just it's some yardage right now. It's the differential. Three-by-one set comes edge pressure. Moses looks to the sideline and he barely gets it off. And he gets smoked in the backfield. McCune gets wrecked up by Bockelman and he had help. Watch uh, you know what, there was a mix up in the offensive line. You had two pullers run into each other. So one thought it was a counter right, the other thought it was a counter left. And that's why no one got blocked. Landon Bockelman with 11 and a half tackles for loss this season. Lineman of the year in the district. All right, we have a two back shotgun now. Second down and long. Counter play action. Moses gets away from pressure and he will run out of bounds at about the 45 yard line and gain five. They were trying to take advantage and go deep. All the receivers were deep. We had corner routes. And we had a deep cross coming across the middle. Three seniors, five juniors, and three sophomores on this offensive unit. But again, Liberty Center getting pressure on the quarterback. Even if they're not hitting him, they are squeezing the pocket and just not giving him the room he needs to make the throws that he wants. Colton, yeah, Colton Chambers did a good job of spying on Moses to knock him out of bounds. Richards in motion. Here comes the screen, knocked away. Oh, what a great play. And that is Seth Savar for Liberty Center. This defense is really strong. I they're, mean, they, we saw it against Valley View and Oak Harbor. They're and, fast coming off the ball. Now that was a screen. The quarterback probably, if he would have, could, could have, would have got a little more depth. You know, it just, he got so much pressure early that the screen didn't have a chance or time to develop. So Liberty Center with the stop and it is fourth down six to go from the 46 and here's McCune kicking this one and it is going to go end over end all the way in the end zone. 
So Liberty Center will take it first and 10 from their 20. Down seven to nothing as we are early in the second quarter. No, really, that that was a pretty good break there for Liberty Center. They have the ball on the 20 yard line now coming out. While the weather in Ohio may be unpredictable, you can always count on weather on the ones. The latest forecast is always less than 10 minutes away. Our accurate and experienced even meteorologists have the latest forecast insights and perspective you can trust every 10 minutes and continuously during severe weather. You can count on weather on the ones only on Spectrum News One. First down. There's that halfback dive. And that time it worked well. Good job by Colton Cruz. That's a big play in their offense. After they run the fullback a little bit, they like coming back with the halfback dive. It's the old dive play. Just let it base blocking, see what he can get with his quickness and making cuts where the creases are. Second and six from the 24. Between Colton and Trenton, they've got 55 total touchdowns in the backfield. Boot pass. Going to run it. And that's a first down. I believe it's going to be very close to it as Landon Amstutz, who rushed the ball 22 times coming into this season, uh, championship game. That's This is a staple wing T play. Fake to the fullback, flash play to the halfback, get outside. Very well defended by the Perry defense. So about a half a yard for Amstutz and Liberty Center. Putbacks, and they'll push through, and that is Colton Cruz with a big first down. See, he has quickness coming off the ball out of his stance. He's in that three-point stance. As soon as they get the command to go, he's in there. First first down of the football game for Liberty Center. And the defense has a tough time playing off the blocks when he hits the line of scrimmage that quick. And that's what they're banking on in running that play. And the other thing is, I, I would bank on that Perry has never seen the wing tee this year. Probably. There's the fullback belly. And it will go to the 40-yard line. See, right now, they've gone to the two staple plays that they have been running all year. See, you, you have a little bit of fullback belly there, and they pulled a guard to trap to get him up inside Tyler Lay. Pulling and doing a nice job on the trap block. That means kicking a defender out. Trenton Cruz with 1,270 yards and 22 touchdowns. Colton has 1,500 plus. Fullback belly again. And it's just short of a first down. They're pulling the front side guard, and he is kicking out the edge defender in this, what is a 3 4 defense, but. Technically, they're playing a 52 defense. Raiden Richards made the tackle see, for the Pirates. You can see Seth Navarre pulling and kicking out. People are blocking down, and then you get a kick out block. Third down from about the 43 yard line. Again, split backs. Gonna hand it to the First man through, and he does not get back to the line of scrimmage. That is Trenton Cruz, and what a great job by Trenton Taylor to come through, and he had help. Yeah, we had Joey Baldry coming from the backside. He was able, when he saw the guard pull, he was able to take that inside gap before the tackle could cut him off. That was going to be a fullback trap play, which is again is one of their standard plays. So Liberty Center is going to go for it here on fourth down with 6.45 to go. Tight end wing set, drew him offsides. Going to be by penalty. Dead ball, encroachment, defense, number 50, five yard penalty results in a first down. So a first down by penalty. You know the coaches were screaming from the sideline, watch the long count. You know. It happens, doesn't it? It happens. The inflection of the quarterback's voice. 
just draws defenders off sides. And another thing is that, again, this is the first time that these two teams have played each other. First meeting. Typical wing T set here. We got an unbalanced set to the right. There's the dive again. And good effort by Colton Cruz to take it across midfield and Liberty Center now in Perry territory. This is typical Liberty Center. Four and five yard the defense to death, chew up the clock, control the ball. That's why Perry's one of their keys were to win third down, get off the field. Because if you don't, they are going to control the clock forever. Yeah, and that's what's happening in this one. And their defense came up large, especially last week against Valley View. With a wing T offense, you do not defensively want to be looking at second and five. They want to chew it up. And sets the quarterback. And he's going to hand off. There's up a fullback trap. Yeah. And there's a big rugby scrum at the 43 yard line. And they should have kept it going, but they whistle it dead. And Trenton Cruz gets they, it to the 43. But you know, Tim, they still got four yards. So now they're looking at third and one. Third and one. And they're getting very close to four down territory. Casey Muller told me, he said, this is what we ran when I was in high school here. And he made a couple of adjustments and they've done a few things to it. But it's simply the, the staple of LC. Okay, double wing set, one back in the backfield. Need a yard. Handoff for the yard. Interesting scheme that they are running with this fullback belly. Trenton Cruz. They are blocking down with the tight end and tackle. So you'll see him coming down, and then the play side guard pulls and kicks out. In the old days, we called that cut it blocking. That was our code for that scheme. Trenton Cruz now with 23 yards. And the drive continues. Down to the 424 mark and Perry leading by a touchdown. And here is Cruz trying to get through there and Trenton will gain a couple, but Baltry was right there on top of him. Looking at second and about six or a short seven. The defense for Perry has been out there for a while now. They are really chewing up the second quarter. And the more tight ends and wing backs they have, the closer the DBs get for Perry. Look for a play action pass coming up pretty soon. Here comes the power to the right and not much there at all. They even brought motion to try to get a, an extra blocker over there, but that was very well played by the Perry defense. And now the DBs are really starting to come downhill quickly to play to run. Well, they know that what what is their percentage? What 95% run? They are they are 82% run and 18% pass. Wow, not as much as I thought. Well, when you're watching the game, it seems like <laughs> yeah, that's right. They haven't done much of the throwing, but that is their offense. Ball out, and it's picked up. And oh, did they get a break on and that one? Trenton Cruz, holy cow, takes it to about the 32-yard line. Yeah, he got four out of that, and it bounced right back up to him. And it's interesting because Coach Muller told me earlier today that they have turf now, and that acted like a turf bounce. Yeah, you know. It, it, I'm not so sure that one of the pullers didn't actually hit into the ball. So for the second time in this drive, Liberty Center is going to go for it. It's fourth down and two. They are in an unbalanced set to the left. And Perry is trying to get adjusted. And that is through there. And Trenton Cruz is going to take it all the way for the touchdown. Their best play with full back belly. 32 yard touchdown run by Trenton Cruz. He got through the initial line of scrimmage and there was nobody home. Pater for Liberty Center. That's because all the DBs were coming up to stop it on fourth and two. And once he got through, there was no one back there. 
Nice job by Trenton Cruz to turn it on and score. The extra point is through and we're tied with 2.09 to go. Two unbeaten teams really battling it you can out. See the kick out block. His brother did a great job of kicking out. 209 left here in the first half. Liberty Center has tied it up at seven. Tie game as both teams have stayed true to their game. And Liberty Center marches for eight minutes and 17 seconds, 80 yards, and every single play was a run. Can you believe it? The Road to Canton is brought to you by your Central Ohio Toyota dealers as we look towards. All right, they will. We'll get to that in just a moment. We'll kick it off first. So it's Max Walker for Liberty Center. Some speed back there. Richards on your right, Savon on your left. Interesting ball game. Wide open Perry and Liberty Center does their thing. And Richards lost a shoe, but got the ball out to the 20 yard line. All right, so it'll be Perry's road to Canton first. And all the playoff games brought to you by the Central Ohio Toyota dealers and they beat Crestview or Crestwood and a big game with Garfield both uh, and coach Bob guess which was telling us that that was an important win South Range was your defending champion from a year ago they shut them out and then beat Harvest Prep to get here ball at the 20 yard line first and 10. Moses finds some time and now he'll run it and take a hard hit. They were trying to get Braden Richards coming across on a shallow cross, which is one of their big routes. And he rode out. He just felt that there was a seam to running, run it, and he was going to take it. Colton Cruz, along with Landon Bockelman, made that the hit. And they say that's an incomplete pass. That was picked off the turf by Luke Savon. Yeah, they were trying to run double slants there and read the outside linebacker. If the outside linebacker takes the inside slant, they throw it to the outside. So the ball at the that's 20. exactly what happened. Yep, ball at the 26 yard line, and that is incomplete with a minute 34 to play in the first half. This is a big third down here because the Perry defense has just been on the field for eight minutes. Perry with two timeouts left. Liberty Center's got all of theirs. Roses to throw. Here's the screen. Here's the screen, and it's cut down. Looks like he may be a shade short, but it isn't by much. That is Landon Cruz, one of the triplets who made the initial hit, and it's fourth down. Yeah, they're trying to set up a tunnel screen. You can see the lineman pulling out to kick out the corner. They just all couldn't get there quick enough. So the Tigers make the stop. And now it's the old wishbone and caught him off guard. That's why they called timeout. Timeout. Liberty Center. They're first. Yeah, the Tigers called timeout because McCune came out initially in punt formation and then they went back to the, the old wishbone. Yeah, and they'll do that in short yardage. And I do, from a coach's standpoint, I agree with what he's doing right here. Uh, you know, not that I'm the great evaluator, but his defense has been on the field so long that they can't put him back on the field right now. 63 seconds left to go here in the first half. Here's the road to Canton for Liberty Center. Elmwood first, then here on the of the playoff games. The Oak Harbor game was tough, and Coldwater, that was anybody's game. And Valley View, they had a big defensive stop as it was a strip sack in the end zone and then they scored from the one yard line 14 to 10 Liberty Center wins that football game to make it to the state championship. So more important things here as Perry 
has a fourth down. They come out in a bone. And here is Moses under center trying to draw off sides. Liberty Center, and they're not biting. And we got movement on the right guard. Dead ball, ball start, offense, number 55. Now that forces fourth a down. punt situation here. So it's going to be fourth and six. Actually, it was the tackle. Anthony Zakaraki. Zagraki makes the error. So it'll be McCune to kick it away. Liberty Center's going to have about 55 seconds, maybe. Do something with it. Going to bounce at the 42, and they're going to just let it roll. Now, Liberty Center may go to some of their quick game. They they can, even though they're wing T in their arsenal, they do go to the shotgun and throw some of the quick game passes. Hitches, slants, quick outs. They have that in their playbook. Do you really think Casey Muller's going to throw it? I'm not sure. I mean, he just went 13 straight plays and just ran off eight minutes. I just don't know. He's there's, got 47 seconds. And so. there's the drives today and that big touchdown from 32 yards. He's under center, so he's not going shotgun. First down from the 25. Full back dive, let the clock run. And it went right over the right side, and that is Colton Cruz. 38 seconds to go. It's a gain of about three. I just find this so interesting. Uh, if you're just tuning in and you're saying, wow, what a contrast in styles. And they're staying true to it. I mean, the wing team, give me four. It feels like Woody Hayes football back in the day at Ohio State. But on the other hand, here's the spread. Throw it all over the yard. It's very modern football on the other side. Yeah, they're staying true to what got them here. That's exactly right. And Casey Muller's going to let this one roll out. And we're going to go to halftime. I'll knot it up. 7-7. Seven, seven, number one versus number two. What a first half of football. The two best teams, the two undefeated teams in Division Five, going at it and squaring off here at Canton and certainly a big first half for both teams doing what they do best. And it's worked on both sides. Both teams. Here is Katie down on the sidelines. Thanks guys, I have Perry head coach Bob Gaswich. Tie game at the half. Typically you guys are both high scoring offenses and defenses that don't give up a lot of points. So true to what's playing out with the defense is here. What are you looking to do in the second half? Score. That'd be cool if we could do that a little bit. Uh, we've had some opportunities. We've got to capitalize on them. You know, it's a state title game. Uh, you, you can't make mistakes like that. So so we'll clean that stuff up or or we'll go home on a sad car ride, you know? You guys uh, came in as ranked one and two final poll. Um, you guys look like a one-two game right now. Um, as far as seeing what the first half with Liberty Center, what are you going to take from that as far as talking to the guys at the half? I mean, it's a hell of a football game. There's two really good, strong football teams playing each other, and this is what it should be. This is what a finals game should be right here. So it's fun. It's awesome. We're excited to still be in it. Yeah, sounds right. Exactly what it should be. All right, guys, back up to you. All right. Thank you, Katie, and thank you, head coach Bob Gaswich, as we are just thrilled to see a battle like this one. Defensive battle on both sides, and we're knotted up at the half at seven apiece. The OHSAA Football State Championships on Spectrum News 1 are presented by Baldwin Wallace University, a confident choice for exceptional learning. Learn more at bw.edu. By Spectrum Mobile. Save up to 60% on your wireless bill with the nation's fastest growing mobile provider. Join the millions that have already switched. And by the Spectrum News app. 
Watch live news anywhere, anytime. Explore stories that matter to you, plus the latest weather every 10 minutes. Available on all of your favorite devices, including Apple TV and Roku. A couple of legends from Ohio in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Maybe we'll have a few more legends be made here this weekend as well as they start their careers. It has been a wonderful first half. 7-7 is the halftime score. Liberty Center uh, doing what they do is their wing T offense and Perry, well, they played the chunk play game and they won that first quarter. But if you look at it, it's all knotted up at seven apiece. And let's take a look at some of the breakdown of the first half, some of the big plays. And Coach Seriano, if you got it, flaunt it and throw it. Yeah, he scrambled out of the pocket, kept his eyes downfield, and that was the deep cross coming from the other side of the field. And right down the middle, Savon for the touchdown of 42 yards. Ran away from the defense. And then Braden Richards made a sensational catch on the sideline. But this is his only catch of the first half. Got to get the ball to him in the second half if you are the Pirates. And then for the Tigers, coming right at you, Trenton Cruz with a big run of 32 yards and the touchdown. That was after 12 plays and they ran it for what? Eight minutes and 17 yes. seconds. But let's face it, all of the hoopla defense offensively, the defense was the star of the show. Yeah. And we said early in the game, in our pregame, that the defenses on both teams are really tough and they're showing it. Well, these two teams have got great defenses and there's no question about it. We're gonna see that here in this second half. Let's talk a little bit about adjustments now. If you're Liberty Center, they've got a good plan. Yeah, I'm not changing much of anything if I'm Liberty Center, but the one thing I think they're going to have to do in the second half is they're going to have to go to some play action pass because those Perry DBs are inching up. There's, they're about seven yards off the line of scrimmage, so at some point in time, they're going to have to fake one of those fullback off tackle plays, pull the ball, and, and take a shot. All and, right. and then defensively, I, I think they've got to be aware of now, don't give up the big play. That is for sure because the Pirates want to throw it deep. Let's go to the sideline Here's Katie with Liberty Center's head coach. I'm with Liberty Center head coach Casey Moeller coming out for the second half. That scoring drive you guys had, every single play was a run play. Is that your goal? Are you looking for keep the ball on the ground? Well, that's just kind of been our bread and butter all year. Um, it, it's what got us here, so that's what we're going to do. Um, we got to be able to throw the ball a little bit, keep them honest, but um, you know we're looking to control the clock, keep their offense off the field, and hopefully end drives with some points. So it was a halftime talk in there if it's such a tight game like this. Well, we just got to be persistent and, and keep be consistent um, and, and finish drives with points and get them off the field on third down. Um, and, and let's give ourselves a chance in the fourth quarter. Okay, Coach, thank you so much. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Guys, back right. up to you. Thank you very much, Katie. And we are set to play here for the third quarter. And both of these teams... Let it all out there, one versus two, and it's tied as we go to quarter number three. That is Trenton Cruz bringing the opening kickoff back to the 32-yard line. Coach, you talked to me about, um, and here are the stats brought to you by Toyota, and passing yards 130 for Perry. Liberty Center hasn't got a, a one. Penalties have hurt the Pirates, and the time of possession is pretty close. Yeah, you know, the, the Pirates just can't hurt themselves with penalties, and they got to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. So Liberty Center, who won the toss and deferred to the second half, have the extra possession. And they will try to go off tackle, and that is Colton Cruz, who got pinned by Drew Smith. And I want to go back to something, Coach. It's you and I were talking about Normally, if you're a wing T team, you take the ball at the start of the game. Right. With, they didn't. With thinking you, I can get one, two, three first downs, even if I don't score, punt it, and win the field position game. But they changed. Now they have the ball coming out in the second half. Colton Cruz in motion. They give it up front. And there is Trenton Cruz, open field, and he will 
take it into the red zone. That is the exact same scheme that they have been running in the first half. Down block by the right tackle and right tight end and a kick out by the right guard. Down, down, kick out. What an effort and a great play by Trenton Cruz to take it to the 18-yard line, 50 Perry, yards. Perry is going to have to get their backside linebacker to scrape over top to take that play. Inside handoff again, and Trenton Cruz gets hit hard on the shoulder pads, but he at least gets a few more yards in. We're getting a heavy dose of the wing T fullback game. Fullback off tackle. That last play was the fullback trap with the left guard pulling and trapping the first down lineman on the line of scrimmage. Zach Rocky makes the tackle on the play. So after the 50 yard run by Cruz, they'll take it inside again. And this time it's Colton Cruz, his twin brother. Uh, they're just having fun, man. They're just having fun. Lamakia good made play. the big play. Yeah, good, good play by Lamakia. Did an excellent <laughs> job of playing off the block on that dive play, getting off quickly and making the hit. He made a good play, but I'm telling you, just to see the smile, that's <laughs> what this is all about. 9.50 to go in the quarter. Tie game in the red zone, Liberty Center. Here comes Cruz off the left side and he will get a first down. Same play that they ran to the right that he broke that long yardage. It is the exact, now you can see the trap block. You can see the trap block by the left guard. Tyler Lay making that hit. They're just doing a, a good job of getting that crease in the off tackle hole. Woody Hayes would be very proud right now. <laughs> that was his play. Cruz wide right. And they hand off inside, and there's nothing there. Colton Cruz, his twin brother, could not get much. Not only twin, it's triplets. If you might have just tuned our way, there are four brothers playing for Liberty Center. Three of them are triplets, all seniors. And Garrison plays defense as a freshman. Second half. Needs six yards for a touchdown. Perry staying with their traditional 50 defense. And here's Trenton. There they brought the secondary up on that fullback belly and got the backside linebacker over top. Braden Richards yes. led the way. Coming from the secondary. See, the secondary doesn't have as much yardage to defend back there, so they can now move up closer and they can support or fill faster than you can in the middle of the field. So all eyes on the Tigers. 8-10 to go here in the third. Tie game, third down and four. Double wing set. Colton in motion. Play gonna action. Going to throw it out to him, and it's a touchdown. The to man in motion. Colton Cruz for the score. What a great play call. They faked that fullback belly, and just like we said, in the halftime talk, play action pass off of your base run. Liberty Center takes the lead. Colton. Really well schemed play to the halfback in motion. Third touchdown of the year for Colton Cruz and now we've got a flag. Oh, Trenton Taylor was into Almost into the backfield. Now they're going to discuss it. If they move this inside the two, I think you're going to see a two point conversion try. Dead ball, encroachment, oh. number zero with the defense. That penalty's declined. Retry. All right, they're going to kick it. So Rosenbrook is in to kick the extra point. 13 7 is the score. Spotted, kicked, and it is good. So 14 to seven on Landon Amstutz's touchdown pass. See, he faked the fullback belly, and he just outflanked him on the perimeter. 
because the corner had to go with Landon Cruz. So the brother did a great job of being a decoy. So you fake the one brother, the other brother ran a pattern and blocked on the outside, and you throw it to the third brother. That was a pretty interesting play there. Eight plays, 69 yards. And Liberty Center has taken the lead. Three minutes and five seconds off the clock. So Colton Cruz scores his third touchdown reception of the year, and that is Amstutz's 10th touchdown throw of the season. Crucial drive right here, crucial possession for Perry. Again, they're eating time off the clock. They're playing Liberty Center is playing exactly how they want to play this game. 754 left here in the third quarter. 14 to 7 Liberty Center. They take the opening kickoff of the second half all the way. And today's kickoff in the second half brought to you by McAfee Heating and Air. And then it will go into the end zone. You know, notice they're kicking the ball flat. Let's go to the sidelines. Here's Katie. All right, guys, thanks. So Liberty Center is powered by the Cruz brothers, as you just saw there. Set of triplets that coach says are uber competitive and 100% intense all of the time. The seniors are standouts for the team. Colton, Landon, and Trenton have been combined going into today's game for over 3,000 yards rushing and receiving, 55 touchdowns, and 207 tackles. And their little brother, freshman Garrison, has now joined the team, too. He's contributed 40 tackles. Guys? And only a freshman, so they're going to keep it going. Showing edge pressure. They're going to pitch it to the near sideline. And down the sideline for a big gain is Braden Richards. Now that's a wrinkle. Yeah, and that is that decathlon speed right there because they had a free shot at him in the backfield. He eluded it and then accelerated down the sidelines. This is the guy that has to have the ball in his hands. He is going to the Air Force Academy to run track. We may see him in the Olympics someday. No question. Second down after an eight yard gain. Empty this time. Gonna throw it out and it's Savon. Gets the first down and there, stays on his feet. There they go, there's the bubble screen. Throw that quick screen, throw the quick game. Let the quarterback, let Moses get the ball out of his hands quickly because the pocket is collapsing on him. See, just fake, throw the, the now screen or bubble screen out on the perimeter. Let the skilled receivers go. Cam Colley made the tackle and had some help. First down at the 38. Again, empty set. Going to throw it Same near side. Play, other side. Savon, wide side of the field, and he is cut down right about the 42-yard line. They are doing exactly what they need to do right now. Get the ball out in space, get the ball out quickly, and get it into your playmaker's hands. Savon with four catches and 59 yards, and he had the big touchdown. They got the scoring started for Perry. Under seven minutes here in the third. Savon and Richards are their two leading receivers. Second down. This is an interesting set. A wing and tight end to one side and trips to the other, and nobody in the backfield. And that's Richards throwing it to Savon. There's the crossing route, which is their bread and butter. So everybody in the house thinks Richards is going to run it out of that set, and he makes a great throw. See, and he has time. The offensive line did an excellent job. There's your deep crossing route. 21 yards on this one. And nice touch. Yeah, Richards was the quarterback before Moses. When Moses was a freshman, Richards was the quarterback. We got a wildcat. And Richards back there again, and now he's going to throw it far side, and they will run Savon. He's got open field and a touchdown. Great blocking on the perimeter. 37 yard touchdown. Bubble screen. A lot of yak yards. 
and Savannah has gone into the end zone for the second time this year. Now this is Perry football. This is how they have gotten to be 15 and 0. Exactly what they're doing in that drive right there. What an answer and a needed answer. Big, big drive. 6.03 left. Good spot. Kicks up and letter perfect. We are tied again at 14 apiece. Savan scores his second of the game. We're tied up at 14. The OHSAA State Championships on Spectrum News 1. The rights to this broadcast have been granted by the OHSAA, representing 822 high schools across Ohio and more than 350,000 boys and girls who participate annually in OHSAA-sponsored athletic competitions. Any rebroadcast or republication of the programming without the written consent of Spectrum and the OHSAA is strictly prohibited. And welcome back to the Division Five State Championship. Perry just scored, and they are the number one team in Division Five. And here is Luke Savon, coach. That was called a bubble. He just went out. Receivers one and two block. Number three runs a little bubble. Quarterback raises up and throws it to him. Great blocking on the perimeter to make that play happen. Both teams. Now finding their strides with their strengths. Yeah, they are now playing their football. Perry is doing what has got them here, and they're showing more balance in the run-pass ratio because they are a 65% run, 35% pass. You just saw number seven, Cam Colley. He's got two kickoff returns for touchdowns. Do they kick it to him? Yes, they do at the 11-yard line. They're going to challenge him, and oh, what a hit! That's huge for Perry to keep Colley in his tracks, and that is Thomas Moeller. Moeller with a big hit. This is a guy that's very dangerous. Not this time. What an impressive play on special teams. And that's a third of it, folks. 5.58 to go, gonna stick with it. And McCoon has wrapped up now, Trenton. There's a strategical adjustment that has just happened to stop that off tackle play the way they blocked. Perry has changed their defense and they have shifted away from the tight end to change the angles of the blocks. So Trenton Cruz only got a couple. So it'll be second down and eight. We got an overshifted defense now in this 50 defense. There's Cruz again, and he's not going to get much on that particular play either. Joey Baltry, 53, made the tackle. They're trying to take away that off tackle seam, off tackle hole, off tackle play, that general area. So they're adjusted the the defense, which completely changes the angles. This Liberty Center team has almost 6,000 total yards this season. 308 a game on the ground. Big third down here. Amstutz. Boot pass. Going to throw it. Ball knocked down. Taylor covers it, but it's incomplete. And Taylor knocked it down. They were trying to throw to the flat. They were trying to throw to Colton Chambers in the flat. See the boot off of the off tackle play. Nice job. Nice job by Trent Taylor. Usually you pull a guard to block that guy. That defensive edge player. That's a huge stop right now by Perry. Max Walker to kick it. Fourth down and five. No rush. Line drive kick been picked up by Savan at the 42 yard line and he will be snowed under right about the 47. But you know what that was really a big catch in that punt because it did not allow any roll and losing field position. Let's go to the sidelines and here's Katie and what about McCoon? 
All right, guys, Perry's Owen McCoon is the grandson of Perry coaching legend Bob Ritley, who led Perry to 189 wins from 1977 to 2001. He passed away from cancer in 2003, so Owen never got to meet his grandfather, but he says he hears stories all the time about his grandpa and how much he was respected in the community. McCoon's mom is Ritley's daughter, and Ritley, remember, played for Mich at Michigan under Bo Schembechler. Guys? Such a great legend, and really, Bob Ritley was pretty much the guy that put Perry football on the map, too. That play incomplete. They, they were running, it was out of the quick game. The inside receiver runs a quick out, the outside receiver runs a fade. You read the corner, corner backs up, throw the out. Corner stays tight, throw deep. Bob Gaswich has got a lot of tricks up his sleeve, and there is no question that they love to air it out. What an exciting brand of football. But then Liberty Center plays their, their game too. And we got all kinds of motion. Flags everywhere. Can't hurt yourself with penalties. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Number 71. Second down. One of their goals. Don't get behind the chains. Yep, the right guard was the one that jumped. They were going to run a quarterback power off tackle. That's why the right guard was pulling. He leads up on the linebacker. Fifth penalty against Perry for 30 yards. Liberty Center has not been penalized so far. Third quarter, about 4.18 to go. Here's Richards again. And he gets through there, and oh, goodness, this one's going to go all the way. Wildcat. Braylon Richards, what a track star he is, and into the end zone for the touchdown. I mean, there was nobody over there that could keep up with him. Well, with that 10, 8, 100 meter speed, wow. Well, you and I said it at halftime, coach. He has to get more he involved. He has to get the ball. And he has. And he's been running Wildcats. So they're throwing the ball to him. They're throwing bubble screens to him. And now they're running him out of the backfield. Lopez's extra point is good. Back-to-back -back scores, and it's 21 to 14. Watch this. I mean, he just, boom, accelerates through there. And he did it on his own on the perimeter because the guard got caught up inside that was supposed to lead him around. So he broke those two tackles on his own. Physical specimen right there. Good size for the speed he has. At six foot, 185 pounds. You run a 10, eight, 100 meters. 60 yards, two plays, 55 yards, 16 seconds. It's a 60 yard run by Richards. Four. Let's see what happens here. This is a critical drive here for Liberty Center. Seesaw back the other way, but two back-to-back -back scores, and you kind of feel like special teams kicked that off because Colley was back there for Liberty Center, and he could not get started because of the special teams play by Perry, and then Perry takes the punt and goes in for the touchdown at two plays later. They're going to kick it to the five-yard line. Up the middle, 20. They have hats on people. And that's Polly to the 32. And let's go back down to the sidelines and Katie Polly. Thanks, guys. All right, well, we just saw that beautiful touchdown run by Perry's Braden Richards. Nobody was going to catch him, and I'm going to tell you why. He is a standout athlete, all Ohio in football, basketball, and track. But this one is his final football game. He's headed to Air Force Academy next fall on a track and field scholarship. He won the Adidas National Championship in the decathlon this past spring in North Carolina. Is a nationally ranked javelin thrower and was a D2 300 meter hurdle state champion this past spring. It runs in the family. His brother is at Utah State for track and field. And Tim and Vince, I challenge you. Could you name all 10 events in the decathlon, guys? You it's probably gonna, could, Katie, but it's gonna I, take me a while now. I know it's the hundred, the four hundred. How about the Google? <laughs> we can bring the out high Google. jump. Yes, and I know he's gonna run something. That's really... 
But how about the fact that he also is all Ohio in three sports? Impressive. Off tackle play. Going to get the first down. Two and plays, they've gotten the first down. Liberty Center moving the chains with 3.23 left, trailing by a touchdown. Back to back scores by Perry here in the Division V championship game. We're in Canton. Both teams are excelling in what got them here. They are running, as you study video on all their games, they are running their feature plays, and they both are doing an excellent job with what they're doing. Both teams undefeated. One's going to go home with a championship trophy. Blitz by the linebacker. And up the middle they go, and they've run this play about 20 times already tonight, but it's effective, and that time it was Trenton Cruz. Gets eight yards. You almost feel like who's going to crack first. And I don't see either one of these teams cracking. So you can see the off shifted nose guard. See the, that's the shaded 50 defense. And that was effective right there. Tried to stop the, the trap, yes. And McCoon, and also in there is Studio to make the tackle on Cruz. By the way, Jaden Studio is going to go play at Kent State next season. You know, in studying their video, Owen McCoon is an outstanding inside linebacker. He has a knack for understanding the blocking schemes, how to react and feel downhill. He is really a good football player. Playing at midfield, third down. And back off again. Oh, they got it again as Trenton Cruz not only got the first down, he gets five into pirate territory at the 42. Notice they're being patient. They're not panicking because they're down a touchdown. They are going to run their offense. Here comes that fullback off tackle. Hits that crease. They're just blocking down enough and kicking out enough to fit a player through that crease. First down. They play from the 42 yard line. Fullback trap. Same play and Trenton Cruz is cut down that time. Didn't get much out of it. That studio. Yeah, he plays both ways, but tonight he's played predominantly on the defensive side of the ball. Ball to 40. Quick scores by Perry. Methodical action by Liberty Center. And a handoff again, and here is Trenton Cruz banging his way all the way inside the 35 yard line. And that time it was Chaponi coming up from his cornerback position to make the tackle. Now you can just see at 185 pounds how physical Cruz is. I mean, he gets those shoulders north and south, and you just don't bring him down on the first hit. He always gets one or two extra yards. Might be the final play of the third quarter. Colton Cruz in motion. Here comes his brother, and he's close to a first down. I think he's I, got yeah, it. Yeah, he spun to the 30. That was the same play that they ran to the left. They ran, just flop it. They're just taking their best plays and running them over and over again. Why would you change? I mean, it's 15, 15 straight. I mean, goodness, that's going to do it. Wow, what a game. Two touchdowns by Perry back to back. And they lead it going to the fourth, 21 to 14 over Liberty Center. quarter about to unfold 21 14 Pirates leading Liberty Benton as of the Liberty Center as you take a look at the total yards 317 for Perry 204 for Liberty Center and see how it's built through the game in that second quarter Perry didn't have much at all 42 plays for Liberty I'm sorry Liberty Center 
and 29 for Curry. Aaron. And thank you, Mr. Drone. In the air and on the ground is Liberty Center in a big pile up as we start the fourth quarter OHSAA game of the week presented by Ball Wallace University right here on Spectrum News One. You know now now they're in four down territory here so they're going to take four shots of this so we're looking at second and seven and they keep running that dive play you know there is a pull off of that where the quarterback pulls the ball and he can pitch the ball to the fullback. That is the second part of that play. They have not shown it yet. They may not, but that is comes off of that halfback dive. Looks like a real solid wing T formation there as Trent Trent's and Cruz runs right off the right side. Yeah, he's running the fullback trap. That's the old wing T trap right there. Left guard pulling, trapping the first down man to his right, and then the fullback. You see, you can see the left guard pulling, coming up inside. McCoon on top of him. Find that middle linebacker position for the Pirates. Tyler Lay has been doing a good job of pulling, trapping, leading up on the linebackers. Liberty Center on third down. And they will hand this time, and it'll be very close to a first down then that like, is Trent yeah. Cruz again it's like he's a yard to a half a yard short I'll take uh, that is Colton Cruz might Colton be the first Cruz. time that I've seen two and five tonight they're both yeah. part of the triplets Colton the way I I can tell them apart Colton runs the dive and Trenton runs the belly fourth down early in the fourth quarter here's the ball it's out and it's covered and it is not going to be enough for the first down. Trenton Cruz fell on the football, but wow, the Pirates are going to take over on downs. It's about a half a yard short, it looks like, up from up here. They've probably run yep. that play 25 to 30 times and not fumbled. And for some reason, oh, the snap, he had trouble with the snap. It wasn't the mesh. It was the exchange from the center and him handling the snap. Now they've got to make a big stop here, get the ball back and go back to their traditional wing T power stuff. On the other side of the ball, Perry has to put it, go back to that quick game, go back to the bubble screens. Try to move the ball out of here. See if it's Richards or Moses. It is Richards at quarterback. Now they have the threat. Here is Richards. Off tackle play. And he goes right up the middle. And a first down and more. Braden Richards directing traffic as he comes through the line. And he is out to the 37-yard line. This puts Liberty Center's defense in a little bit of quandary. Do you really go out and play those three wide receivers? Or do you keep some people in tight to play the quarterback? It's a tough situation right now. They're really stretching the defense. And just an excellent block. That was the one back power. Trips to the near sideline. See, they've only got two people out here on three receivers. Now they're going to throw the bubble off of it. And here is Savon and breaks free, 50, and spins into Tiger territory down to the 42-yard line. Liberty Center did not get lined up correctly or they wanted to keep the defenders inside. But it was three on two. See, you can see there's only two defenders out there. That's a, in spread schemes, that's an automatic, you throw that bubble. Savan made the catch. And the ball is down to the 41 yard line of LC. One thing about Perry here in this second half, they have really opened it up. They yes, have they... definitely said, okay, we're not going to fool around with tackle to tackle. We're going to play in space, get the ball in the hands of our athletes. And that is what they do best, and they are executing it very well. 22 yards on that completion, by the way. Now, Liberty Center is going to have to make an adjustment to them, at least be three on three over there, which may negate them throwing that bubble. 
You throw that when you feel you have leverage on the perimeter to block or you have numbers or a combination of both. Well, the Ohio Department of Public Transportation reminds you that it's okay to use your phone during a sporting event, but you should never use your phone behind the wheel. If an officer sees a violation, they can pull you over. Fines now start at $150. So phones down, it's the law. So Perry is just building their brand as well. They've been in the regionals for just the second time back in 2016. But one thing, Bob, guess which is done is they have built a 15-0 record this season. And he has won 10 or more ball games every year he has been there. Very well defended by Liberty Center. That was the same quarterback power play that they ran on the very first play, and they defended it very well that time. Richards has gone all the way in the second half. You see Trent Taylor out there at tight end. This is just an interesting set with a tight end wing to the boundary and three wide receivers to the far side. Again, they have a three on two. They're going to throw the bubble again. And it is well defended this time. The safety came down very no. quickly. No place for McCune to run. So now it's third down. That was Colton Chambers that reacted from his deep safety position to come down and take it. And you could see there were three on two, and that was the green light to take that throw. And here comes Jaden Studio, and I think it's the first time in the second half for sure that he's been on offense. So Studio is going to be in the backfield. And now a timeout. And they weren't quite lined up timeout. right. There was a little bit of confusion. So 7.55 left to go in the football game. Perry holding on to a 21 to 14 lead and driving. Lights are on, Pirates trying to perform through the air. And it's Savan with a couple of touchdown passes from Moses. And this is a great catch by Richards on the sidelines. He's taken over as a Wildcat quarterback now, but they have done a great job, Coach, of getting out in space and letting their athletes go. Yeah, he and Savon have been the key factors in this game right now because you've got to try to take both of them away, and it's very difficult. Do you, do you take away the inside run or the outside pass? And Richards running from the quarter position, tripped up, only got to the 38-yard line. Well defended. Navarre makes the big hit for great, LC. Great pursuit by the Liberty Central defense. They were trying to run outside on that play. That wasn't the quarterback power. That was an outside sweep with the Wildcat quarterback. Fourth down and seven. They're going for it. Richards. Sprint out. Going to throw it deep. He's got it in the air, and it is out of bounds, incomplete. The Tigers have held. Just trying to get him deep. Savon was the intended receiver on the sidelines, and he gave it all he had. Fade route. He was trying to put it over the outside shoulder. It just got a little too far, but it was very well defended. Really very well defended. And that was Collie won the pass defense. Yes. And Braden Richards, first incompletion. He was three for three. He had only thrown six passes this season. And so that is a significant number. Brett Hildebrand and Matt DeRozio will continue the celebration with the OHSAA championship postgame immediately following the trophy presentations. It's all right here on Spectrum News 1. Your home for high school sports. Terrazio and Hildebrand. Boy, they will break it all down for you. And we got one left. 7 30 tonight. Palmer and Glenville. Boy, this is a very, very good football game. It is very well played by both teams. So. 
Here's where we stand. 7-19 to go in the ball game. Liberty Center just held on downs. So they get the football on their own 38 yard line. And there's that offensive line led by Bockelman coming out. And this may be their stand right yeah, here. This may be the most important drive of the year for them. They're down one score, 21 14. Perry scored back to back to take over the lead. So here we go. Go back to their bread and butter. Tigers drop the football, and Amstutz has to eat it. And this, Studios there and others. They've had two exchange problems in the last two plays. Uh, you know, obviously, I don't know what it is, but it's causing them some problems and getting them out of rhythm. They do not want to be second 11 behind the chains in this type of offense. 74, Hunter Spangler is snapping. Boot pass. Going to throw it, and it's incomplete. And the fullback in the flat. It was there. Xander Zeider had a chance at this and just could not bring it in. It was a good call. Good time to call it. Receiver was open. He just couldn't make it work. Now we got a third and long. And this is not the position that a wing T team wants to be in. But they've got to try to convert here. 6.38 left in the game. Down a touchdown. From the 36 yard line and we get. I'm not sure if it's illegal motion. Dead it ball. looks like it is. All start. It is. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty. Third down. First penalty of the day on LC. Take it back to the 32 yard line. So now it's third and 16. They may just run the ball here and then punt it. Because there are six over six minutes left. They're, they can technically get the ball back. Here's a wrinkle. Twins to the near sideline. They're in the shotgun. Let's see what they do. Amstutz to throw. They're playing zone. Going to throw it across, and it's complete. And to the 40-yard line, and that is all. Colton and, Chambers. And Chambers, who comes in occasionally on offense at running back, the six-foot senior, caught it and gained some positive yeah, yards. Yeah, that was really the a good play. They got, a, they were looking at a third and like 16. They got a lot of it back. Well, they got half of it. So now, do you fake a punt? Do something crazy? No, I think you're going to play the field position game here. Try to punt the ball, force them to go three and out. Here is a rugby style kick. See, Boy, and Walker just they did can it. get this before it goes in the end zone. Oh, and they tapped it at the one yard line. Oh, no, well, he got it. It was in the yeah, end his, zone. Yeah, his legs hit the line. But still, even that they have flipped the field here where Perry has 80 yards to go. Now, if they can force a three and out and get the ball back, they've got to you know, again, they're in a position to try to score and tie the game. Here it is again. And his knee yeah, was his on knee, the white yeah. line. If, and his elbow. If he could have just knocked the where ball the, backwards. Where the ball was. Yep. The That's ball this. broke the plane. Huge series right here. Got to give some credit here. Where credit is due. Mike Dane is our rules analyst. Previous and they're going, and they're going to is under review. look at it. Every play is Mike and let's let's go to Mike here because he's just chomping at the bit to talk to us and Mike Dane is our rules official and Chad Adams is the video video replay official looking at this. But what do you think Mike. So what they're going to look at upstairs is possession of the football before the ball breaks the plane. It has nothing to do with where the player is. It's all about the ball. If he secures possession in the field of play then carries it into the end zone because the kicking team cannot advance the ball. The ball is going to be down at the spot where possession is secured at the one. And that's a pretty good look. 
Don't know what they're going to decide upstairs. They have a, a much clearer look than we do. That looks like possession, but we're going to leave it to the guys in charge. Garrison Cruz, the freshman, made the play. And making the decision up here is Chad Adams, the replay official. And he's got some credentials, too. He works the NFL games as a replay official at the Thursday night After game. After review, the re ruling on the field is reversed. Ball being placed on the one-yard line. First and ten, Perry. That is why they punted. Yeah, that's right. So now it's a 99-yard field. They could get it back with decent field position, but with a team like Perry, they can make a first down. Last week against Valley View, they had a strip sack in the end zone. The ball was spotted at the one yard line. Four it man was, front. It was the game winner. Here's Moses back in the ball game, and he finds Richards, Richards on yeah. the far sideline for the completion. So they put Moses in the quarterback and throw the ball to Richards for the first down. It's a deep out. He ran an 11 yard out cut. First and 10 with 542 to go. Liberty Center needs a takeaway defensively like they have in the last two weeks. Bachman had a, a pick six in the red zone in this area three, three two stack. weeks ago. Here's Richards. Braden Richards down the sideline and he will step out of just bounds. Just stepped out of bounds. That was a jet sweep. Lost a just could not turn the corner quick enough to the 31 yard line first down. Got the fastest guy they had out on the perimeter. He might be the fastest guy in this championship tournament. All seven games. Another first down. Two plays, two first downs. Baby Norman's pretty quick too from Springfield. Yes. <laughs> he he proved it last night. That kickoff return. High formation. Will they ball control it here? Off tackle play. Every once in a while and you've got, got Richards at tailback now. Chambers covered him at the 33 yard line. Good defensive play by Liberty Center. So let me let me think about this. Just if you're a coach, do you want to run clock here? Yes. If you are, I mean, Perry has been airing it out. They got out of their own end zone, which was a I still play. think you can throw the quick game, but you just want to use the clock. Okay. I'm not saying you have to run the ball on every play. There's a boot pass off of it. Moses down the middle with Coon. He's got up and field. He's at the 40 and down to the 30. Stays on his feet. Huge play. See that fake to the tailback froze those linebackers and he got him out. That was an old, old scissors play. You were able to slide the, the receiver out right behind the linebackers. He slid right out of the backfield. That is an old I formation play, one of the first I formation plays that you put in. They ran the fullback right, right through the B gap. Brooks Bainfeld on the tackle, or it would have been a touchdown. We used to call that a waggle pass in the old days. Off tackle and a Wildcat play. Bainfeld there again. Beckelman did a really nice job of shutting that off. That was 43 yard. 43 yards on the, the preceding play, and we're now under four minutes. Perry has taken control of his football game in the second half. Back to back scores, and they're at the 23 yard line now. See, he's watching the play clock. Richards off tackle. Going to do it again, and he gained a couple. See, he's watching the play clock go down to five, and then he's snapping the ball. So if you are Liberty Center and they just called their, Center, first, their first, is this the time that yes. you start calling your timeout? Yes, so that you have enough time. Remember, this Liberty Center is not a quick-scoring offensive team. They methodically put drives together. 
So they have to know what they need to do and how much time they have to have. So One, that, that's critical here. It's third down, then they'll probably call another timeout on fourth down. One more championship left, and Alter and Glenview, Glenville and Glenville arriving first off the bus and here comes Alter out of Dayton. What a matchup it's 730 tonight right here on Spectrum News one. Seven point game. Empty set on third and eight. Moses back in at quarterback looking at the sidelines. You know what? It call. looks like Liberty Center is playing man to man with a free safety. That's why he stopped and looked at the sidelines. And here's Moses trying and to get outside. That's the play for man to man. And he will get to about the 16. He pulled five people out of the defense and then ran the quarterback. First hit by Colton Cruz. Timeout. Liberty Center. So Liberty First Center second. has burned their second timeout. Which they have to. And look at the yardage in the second half. Look at the third and fourth quarter. 264 for Perry and just 128 for Liberty Center. This Perry team has taken the big plays and scored on them. Both teams undefeated. Perry, the number one team in Division Five. Liberty Center, the number two team in Division Five. They're selling it right here on the field. You know, the question you have to ask yourself is, whose hands do you want this football in? If I was Coach Guesswick, I would say Braden Richards. I would go with that too. So, and I'm looking, and it looks like he is going to be the Wildcat quarterback. So they're going to do something to devise the ball, the, the play where he has the football. And by the look at that formation, maybe a quarterback run. Fourth down, two yards for a first. Need the 14. And it is, it's quarterback power. And motion is the call. It's a flag on the play, and it's going against Perry. That was a touchdown. All start. Offense, number three, five yard penalty, fourth down. So now what do you do when you take it outside the 20 yard line? Well, one of your options is to kick the field goal if you have a field goal kicker. So the receiver. I I'm not an official. I just I didn't see anybody, but I was zeroed in on the quarterback looking for the scheme. Well, they're going to go for it anyway. They are not going to kick it. This really changes your play call. And a timeout. Yeah, they, again, they weren't really lined up. Timeout. Perry, their second. So Perry has taken their second timeout, and Bob Guestwich was not happy at all when he looked out there to see the formation and the time on the play clock and he immediately reacted to call timeout. If they were going to kick a field goal here, it would be a 38 yard field goal. When you take everything into consideration where the holder is, the end zone, it would be a 38 yard field goal. So, you know, I don't know if they have a field goal kicker they can kick 38 yards. Three and a half to go in a tight one. And you would expect this. Let's face it, these two teams have been one two all year long. Why not just decide it on the field? And Perry has taken control here in this second half. Savone on a 37 yard touchdown pass, and then Richards a 60 yard run. And they were two minutes apart. And McCoon is back out here. So he may be a lead blocker. They might be sliding him out in the flat. We have a stack formation they haven't showed all night. Here's Moses, and he is going to be sacked. Huge, huge play by the defense. Liberty Center has held with 3.23 to play in the ball game. 
That's big, and right in the middle of it is the freshman, Garrison Cruz. They brought edge pressure. That's why McCoon was in there to try to see that, pick it up. But they were allowed, they brought Colton Cruz off of one edge. Big defensive stop. Their, their idea was we've got to get pressure on the quarterback. Cannot give him time to throw. So now they've got to get into some time, some type of hurry up offense. So here's Amstutz from the 21. And they are going to hand off. Here's Colton Cruz, and he almost breaks it. Wow, buck sweep. They almost got it. Great block by the offensive line. They're going to hurry now. Out to the 41 and the first down. They'll set those chains and start the clock. 313. They only have one. Same play. Gets outside, and he will be wrestled, and the clock will continue to run as Taylor took him down. They only have one timeout left. All at the 45-yard line. They want to save that timeout as much as they can. 250 and counting. Second down and five from the 45. Liberty Center. Two split receivers to the right. Look for a sprint out flood. Amps does to throw it, and it's caught. That's Chambers, but he is stopped. Still at, made yardage. At the 48-yard line. Now it's a very manageable third down. Third and three. Good as play. As soon as they put that guy in motion, I was thinking sprint out flood. And that's Richards who made the tackle on the play. 2.13 to go. Out of the gun. Third down. And Amstutz going to run for it, and he got it. First down. And on the defense was Vince Tomczyk. He had Brooks Benfeld open. He went down and ran like a six-yard stop route. There he is. But he ran it, got the first down. Lose the chains. And they will run it. Here's There's Colton. the buck sweep. And a big hit right at the 44-yard line. And that is Moses on defense that made that hit. You know, I think he could have cut that up, but I know what he was thinking. I got to get out of bounds. I got to be able to, you know, he might have been able to cut it up and get a little bit more yardage. But he knew since it was a running play, I got to get out of bounds. Second down from the 44-yard line of the Pirates for the Tigers. They need a touchdown to tie and the extra point. 142 left. Three wides in now. Looks like man-to-man -man with a free safety. Amstutz, pump and go. He's got it in the air, and it knocked away at the last minute. Wow. Great play defensively by Tomczyk and Landon Cruz was the intended receiver. They have tried to throw deep on him three times and no one has been able to get separation. That was a good throw too. Led him perfectly. Yes. It just, I've not seen a high school kid all year be able to play the deep ball like he plays it. Yeah, His technique is impeccable. And he's going to go out there again on Cruz. This is man-to-man -man coverage. Here comes the pressure. Throws it in the middle. It's caught for the first down. Clock will stop. They yep. only use 12 seconds in two plays. As soon as the sticks are set, that clock will run. What a great play, and that is Cody Miller. Cody Miller catches it. Just went down and ran a hitch. Empty set. This is different for a wing T team. Minute 16 to go. Amstutz to throw defense. it again. Gonna fire it in the middle. It's dropped. Incomplete, but it's only took about four seconds. Those, so. Yeah, those receivers are just going down at about six yards, five yards, and finding a soft spot and turning around. That's what, that, what that, Amstutz is waiting for. That was Miller. Here's the previous play, and he got popped. The quarterback Amstutz, but that was enough for a first down and a great catch by Cody Miller. So it's second down, 70 seconds left. Empty set. Ball on the 33-yard line. Coverage. 
And so it's plenty of time. He's going to be hit. stopped, hit, and incomplete. McCune was in the area. They shifted the zone coverage at the last minute and went two high safeties. He was trying to hit that soft spot again. So you can see him waiting to get, to get it. Third down, he got hit in the backfield and that was Drew Smith, first team all district, the senior with four sacks this year and he got a quarterback hit right there. A minute, six seconds to go. Liberty Center looking for a tying touchdown. Third down play, gonna throw it over the middle and it's caught for the first down and he just got the first down. He ran a slant inside. Zone coverage. Landon Cruz with the first down play. It's just some really good passing for a wing T team in this two minute offense. 53 seconds left. One timeout left here for Liberty Senator trying to hold on to it. High possession passes. Going to throw it deep into the end zone. It's just off his hands. Just off the hands. Caught him in man to man coverage. That's Cruz. Almost. Good time to take a shot. It was first down. You're on the 22 yard line. You've got three more downs. Second down from the 22. Tell Perry, me there's more excitement wow. here than anywhere Perry else. Perry doing a great job of changing from zone to man, changing up the looks. Press coverage. We got a flag and a motion call, illegal motion hey, ball. on ball Liberty start. Center. Offense, number 55, five-yard penalty, second down. Left tackle. Well, this is the, what you want in Two undefeated teams, top two teams in Division Five, going for it all. Zone coverage. Amstutz the look. Here's the throw. It's into the end zone and it's dropped. Almost picked. It's almost picked Double up. Double coverage. Savon was the guy that had it in his hands. Talent playing zone. Savon come all the way over from his safety position. Alan Talent was the guy, and now it's down to third down and 15. The ball at the 27-yard line. Get half of it back. It should be the thinking for Liberty Center. 29 seconds left. Amstutz the throw. Firing wheel route into the end zone and it's too far incomplete two outside receivers came inside the third receiver did a wheel to the outside Tom Zach did not move he just read it and stayed with it Colton Chambers the intended receiver and it was just a yard too much so now the football game comes down to fourth down LC has to get to the 12 yard line for a first down. They will huddle up and here they come. Perry may be bring one of the linebackers just to force him to throw the ball early. And we've got a whistle and a timeout. The final timeout by Liberty Center. Timeout. That was Liberty a take Center. a look at the, the coverage. See how they're playing us. To see if the play we called is good versus that coverage or explain to the quarterback what the coach has seen and what you need to do to beat that coverage. Well, both of these head coaches have called whale of the football game. Staying within their guidelines, staying in their systems. And here we are. 23 seconds left. Liberty Center's out of timeouts. Perry's got one timeout left. Fourth down and 15, ball in the 27. They need the 12-yard line for a first down. Coach, you almost feel like they have to throw it. Oh, yeah, they have to throw it. I'm just in my mind going over. They may go to some type of deep crossing routes. 
you know, it's going to be hard just to throw up a fade and beat them on that because they're going to be playing so loose. So you're going to try to think maybe something coming across the middle. Eight, and eight players for Perry on the back half, including the linebackers. I think McCoon is going to stay right in the middle and spy the quarterback in case he takes off. Trips to the far sideline. 23 seconds left to go in the ball game. Need a touchdown to tie. Amstutz looking to throw. Fires it over the middle and it is incomplete. He was trying to hit the middle. He was trying for the first down and it goes incomplete. Perry holds on downs with 17 seconds left to go in the ball game. Perry just got the coverage underneath. You can see they're sending somebody deep and the outside receiver underneath the deep route. This is pretty much what I thought they would do. Landon Cruz was there in the middle, but he could not the, come down with yeah, it. The, they were in zone, and they just got really deep in their zones. Somebody was over top, someone was underneath. Very well defended. It was a good play on both ends. What a football game. Perry takes a knee. They will run out the clock. And for the first time in school history, their first trip to the state championship, Perry High School has won the Division Five State Championship. The Pirates 21, the Tigers 14. An incredible emotional moment for both schools. One of the best high school football games I have seen in years. And there are the two head coaches congratulating each other. And what an effort by both. Bob wow. Guess which gets the cold. Those kids take the water. Played their hearts out. The ice bucket. What an effort by both of these schools. No scoring in the fourth quarter, but my goodness, you wanted this game to end with a chance to tie, and that's exactly what we got. It was an amazing end. Unbelievable. In state championship. One team would go home 16 and 0. One team goes home at 15 and 1. Liberty Center had won 29 of their last 30, and they put it all out there. They will finish 15 and 1. And Perry, out of Lake County, comes away with the title. You can surely see why both teams were 15 and 0 coming into this game. I'll tell you what, these guys are spent. I'm spent just I'm, watching that's it. That's just what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm spent announcing it. <laughs> Emotion on both sides. Let's go down to Katie. All right, thanks, guys. Bob Guesswish, state champions, 16 and 0. You finished with a perfect season. Congratulations, Division Five, Division Five state champions. And not only that, the first time in school history. How are you feeling right now? Look at that. Look at the whole community out here. That's what's amazing about small school football in this state is it's all community-based. There's so much pride in it. You're doing it with the kids who grew up together. It's just absolutely amazing. There's nothing like this. It's amazing. You went in at halftime and I talked to you and you said what you want to do in the second half was score some points. You got two touchdowns and tonight that was enough. Hey, thank God for Braden, right? Yeah. That helps. Yeah. That helps a little bit. Braden, Luke, our guys stepped up. Everybody scrapped. Defense scrapped. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty Very cool. cool. Right? And you only have seven seniors on this team. So how does that set you up for the future? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? This is awesome. Our guys are going to enjoy this. And those seven seniors that stuck it out, man, that's resiliency. That's team. That's selflessness right there in that group right there. And, and we're going to celebrate the hell out of those guys. Yeah, how's this car ride home, bus ride home going to be? And I, I feel like with all these fans, there's going to be a party in Perry tonight. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I think it's going to be all right, though. I think it'll be good. I think so. Congratulations, Coach. Go celebrate with your team. Guys, back up to you. He looks like a track star himself, and he's got one that also has some skills as a football player, Braden Richards. What an outstanding athlete. 
He just can do it from all angles. And he was one of the reasons why Perry took control in the second half. He had 124 yards on 11 carries, three for four through the air. And Richards also had three catches, well, three targets and two catches for 46 yards. And what an effort there. But uh, the emotions of Bob, yes, which, I mean, he came from Jerome. He was the quarterback coach at Marion Local, so he knew he had the experience of knowing what it takes to be a state champion. And Perry comes through with, and they overcame eight inches of snow this week on their field. Yeah. Very I, practice could time. Could you imagine getting ready for the state championship and you go out to practice and you have, have eight inches of snow? Yeah, I think somebody got a shovel, that is for sure. And uh, what a what a great effort! And how about those Liberty Center Tigers? I mean, 15 and one, uh, they won it back 26 years ago. They had a handful of of the fathers play in that game. Two coaches played in that game, and uh, they certainly knew what it took to win a state championship. So they impressed. Uh, all of us, that is for sure, and I'm sure all of you with their effort here tonight in the Division Five Championship. Here's Director Tim Street, and he will be able to give the runner-up trophy to Liberty Center here. And he's, let's go down on the field and hear the trophy presentations, the runner-up first. In 1926, almost 100 years ago, Liberty Center football was established. And over those almost 100 years, the Tigers have become not only one of the best teams in Northwest Ohio, but in the state of Ohio. And I remember, I know a lot of they remember, 1992, the Tigers made their first trip onto the Final Four in the state stage. Coach Lindgren had you as one of the Final Four teams for the first time. And here we are, 30 years later, and the Tigers once again are playing on the last day of the season. <laughs> Coach Moeller, I know one of the things you talk about is that it's never finished. And that work ethic is what got you here. I know that that work ethic is what will get the Tigers here again. So it's my honor on behalf of our OHSA and our board of directors and our member schools. This is Jay Selgo from the OHSA board of directors. It's my honor to give the Division Five State Runner-Up Trophy to Liberty Center. Congratulations. Third runner up for Liberty Center to go along with their championship 26 years ago. I mean, that's a good football team, coach. And and they were They will special. be back. Oh, they are special. And the thing that's great about them is that, you know, that wing T is such a great offense, but that defense, uh, and we saw it tonight and this afternoon, it was a very difficult um, team to defend. But the Pirates figured it out. 15 and 1 runner up in the state of Ohio. There's nothing to sneeze about. That is for sure. So this Perry team coming from Lake County up in northeastern Ohio matched Kirkland. They beat Kirkland during the regular season. And what does Kirkland do? They come in and win a state championship. And Perry says, we got one too. For the first time ever. The Pirates with a one touchdown victory over Liberty Center 21 to 14. So we are prepared to go back down on the field and the first trophy presentation ever to the Perry Pirates. 
Coach, guess which? You and these seven seniors who have played together since second grade have been on an ascension since you got to Perry. In 2021, regional semifinalist. In 2022, regional finalist. 2023, you're right here. 16-0 state champions. You have established yourself as the team in the Northeast that everyone has to go through if they want to come here. On behalf of our board of directors, all of our member schools, it gives us great pride to present to Perry the Division V 2023 State Championship Trophy. Congratulations. And how about that? Those seniors were freshmen four years ago and they had to battle the pandemic and everything. And what do they do? They stick with it. And I think that was the comment by Coach Bob Geswitz to us way back on Tuesday that those seniors were his bell cows. Yeah, they were very resilient and great work ethic. No question about that. And when you can rely on uh, a young man who's got a huge future ahead of him in Braden Richards. I mean, he's not only all Ohio in football, he's he's also in track and basketball too. I mean, and what a tremendous athlete. And he played everywhere, offense and defense. And how can you not give him today's player of the game? Brought to you by Altcare Health Plans, Braden Richards. Here's Moses throwing to big, him early. Big catch, high pointing at ball. That was huge. Great catch. And you know, overall, he not only had that catch, but he had 231 total yards of offense in this ball game, 124 of it on the ground. And the score, three out of four through the air as well. But in the second half, Coach, he was the guy they said, all right, we're putting it in your hands. Yeah, he took control. Yeah, this was a big defensive play by him and a huge hit. And uh, what a great effort by that young man right there, Braden Richards, with a huge future headed to the Air Force Academy. What a deal they're getting. Wow, I'm telling you, this was fun to call. I hope it was fun for you to watch because it had everything in it all wrapped up in 48 minutes of These football. teams did everything that they were famous for, and in the end, it just came down to which defense could make the stop in a certain place. But they both played a great football game on both sides of the ball. And a couple of touchdowns in the last two minutes uh, of that third quarter, and Richards uh, hitting Savant with a 37-yarder, and that only took a minute 51, and then Richards with a 60-yard run on the next series, and that changed the tide because at that point, Liberty Center had a 14-7 to lead, and then the tying touchdown, the go-ahead touchdown, and then defense made it happen. All right, tonight's final score is Perry 21 and Liberty Center 14. Tune in later for the Division IV championship game between Alder and Glenville. Coverage begins at 7.15 right here on Spectrum News 1 and the Spectrum News app, your home for high school sports. Been a great night for Vince Siriano, Kate Pollock, and our entire Spectrum News 1 crew. I'm Tim Bray. Good night from Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Kent.